Coming up on today's Airborne, Greg Koontz is to receive the 2014 Bill Barber Award for Showmanship. ESA's space plane is set for flight. And the FAA is attempting to regulate model aviation through rules interpretation. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Greg Koontz has been named the recipient of this year's Bill Barber Award for Showmanship. He will be presented with this award in front of his peers at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh on Tuesday, July 29th at the Theater in the Woods. Koontz's aerobatic routines in both the Super Decathlon and the new Extreme Decathlon have been featured at air shows from coast to coast and internationally. His comedy act, The Alabama Boys, features Greg as Clem Cleaver, who steals a 1946 Piper J3 Cub and lands it on top of his pickup truck. Koontz is a former chairman of the ICAS Aerobatic Competency Evaluation Committee, holds an unlimited aerobatic waiver, and is a NAFI Master Instructor for Aerobatics. In our opinion, Greg is a great showman and a good guy. The Bill Barber Award for Showmanship dates back to 1986 and is awarded to airshow performers or teams that have demonstrated great skills and showmanship. The European Space Agency's space plane will showcase reentry technologies after its unconventional launch from Kourou in French Guiana on a Vega rocket this November. Instead of heading north into a polar orbit as on previous flights, Vega will head eastwards and release the space plane into a suborbital path reaching all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Engineers are forging ahead with the final test on ESA's intermediate experimental vehicle known as the IXV to check that it can withstand the demanding conditions from liftoff to separation from Vega. This flight will also flight test the technologies and critical systems for Europe's future automated reentry vehicles returned from low orbit. When the IXV splashes down in the Pacific at the end of its mission, it will be recovered by ship and return to Europe for detailed analysis to assess the performance and condition of the internal and external structures. The actual performance will be compared with predictions to improve computer modeling of the materials used and the space plane's design. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. The great majority of model aircraft flyers belong to an organization known as the Academy of Model Aeronautics. This organization has supported responsible RC flyers for years in operating their aircraft sensibly. However, outside this organization are rogues that are causing trouble for responsible flyers. The FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 has words in it that address model aviation. And in the FAA's application of the act, their interpretation of the words is so narrow because of the bad guys that the legitimate model airplane flyers are going to get hurt. The AMA and the model aircraft community have a comprehensive set of safety rules that are regularly followed that already address what the FAA is concerned about. They feel that current regulations, plus some simpler, more focused rules that do not affect model aircraft as a whole, are enough to prosecute any rogue flyer that flies in the wrong space and endangers air safety. The FAA is using a regulatory bomb rather than pinpoint targeting. The Academy of Model Aeronautics is seeking help to get the FAA back on track. 
Check out the whole story at www.modelaircraft.org. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of this plant. If you're going to present a show, it's good to practice first. This is a great video of the Boeing 7879 rehearsing for its demonstration at Farnborough. It's a beautiful thing to see. Search Boeing Preps the 7879 Dreamliner on YouTube. Customer demand for the new Hartzell Propeller Advanced Swept Airfoil 5-Blade Prop for retrofit on TBM 700-850 aircraft has been robust. It's the same propeller that comes standard equipment on new Dar Sakata TVM-900 aircraft, which also have been in high demand. Since the new structural composite propeller received its STC from the FAA in February for installation on the TVM-700-850 aircraft, the company's dealers have been retrofitting about five aircraft per month, which is ahead of company projections. The new five-blade propeller has also been approved by EASA for European operations. According to the company with the new Hartzell propeller, TBM 700-850 takeoff acceleration from 0 to 90 knots is 10% faster than with any other available propeller. Hartzell's propeller will also provide for hundreds of feet per minute faster climb, and they say the new 5-blade prop is also significantly quieter in the cabin. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. Welcome back. Well, the saga of the Santa Monica Airport continues, and it looks like the people must be heard. A grassroots organization has gathered enough signatures from Santa Monica residents to have a measure placed on the November ballot, which would give them a voice in land use decisions involving Santa Monica Airport. The announcement ensures that Santa Monica voters will have a chance to be consulted before any decision by politicians to develop the 227 acres of low-density airport land can go into effect. Voter approval will now be required for any city plan to change the use of low-density airport land for non-aviation purposes. Unless voters approve such a change, the city will continue to keep airport land in low-density aviation use. The group has been supported financially by AOPA and NBAA, along with support from local businesses, residents, and pilots. Garmin International has announced worldwide coverage of the Garmin Pilot application for iPad and iPhone, which provides flight planning capabilities, comprehensive weather information, and full-featured navigation. Pilots also have access to expanded coverage of European charts in a single application, including geo-referenced flight charts and safe taxi airport diagrams. Additionally, radar and satellite imagery for Western Europe, Canada, Australia, and the U.S. are provided. Visual reporting points commonly found in Europe are overlaid on the moving map page. Customers also have access to optional geo-referenced European flight charts for select countries, global terrain, as well as U.S. and European obstacle alerting is also available within Garmin Pilot. Garmin Pilot 6.2 is available immediately as a free update, providing existing customers access to smart airspace, fast find, and optional worldwide coverage. For new customers, Garmin Pilot is available in the Apple App Store as a free download for the first 30 days. It's reported that a passenger ran into a snag at the Orlando International Airport when a TSA agent says his driver's license was not valid. The driver's license was issued by the District of Columbia, also known as Washington, D.C., but the agent was not familiar with this issuance of licenses and demanded to see the passenger's passport. 
The matter was cleared up by a TSA supervisor, and a TSA spokesman said, quote, Officers are trained to identify fraudulent documents, which can potentially deter and detect individuals attempting to circumvent this layer of security, end quote. In defense of the TSA agent, there are a lot of us that think many inhabitants of Washington, D.C. are from another world, but that's an entirely different topic. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Aeroborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And by the way, there are now only six days until Oshkosh. ANN's advanced team is already on site and will be there to bring you the most comprehensive coverage in the business. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.